Hi, I'm Al. This is a video. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, we're going to be checking out uh, a little bit of history. Well, not really history, but just my opinion. And a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about relates to my history. It is my top 10 favorite demons of all time. This is obviously a objective truth. Uh, I am the sole opinion that counts in this world. Please don't take that seriously. Anyway, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you guys what my favorite demons are, why they're my favorite, and give a little bit of story. Because a lot of these are older levels. So a lot of you guys are going to be like, hey, that's not a good level. Why are you talking about this? That's stupid but a lot of them have very very great backstory with me personally and i have a lot of things to say about them so i'm very excited to hop into it uh viewer discretion is advice my opinion as i said and yeah a lot of these i think will come as a surprise to a lot of people because i don't really ever talk about a lot of these demons there are going to be extremes in this i primarily just play extremes so naturally there are going to be extremes high up on the list because those are levels i spend a long time with uh but i did my best to avoid as many extremes as possible except for the the ones that you kind of expect but either way we're gonna hop into it and we're gonna check this stuff out starting in at number 10. at number 10 we have red by codex this is an insane demon that i beat around the time when it came out and the really the only reason why i really like this is because this is a funky level this level is incredibly enjoyable incredibly fast paced and fun to play and it was the first time i really tried to push myself with wave I beat this around the time when I was still like really bad at wave in quotation marks where wave was like my chokehold in this game where I, I really struggled with it and I decided hey I'm gonna try this level just for fun see if I enjoy it and it gave me a hard time with the wave but it also gave me like a really good time I really enjoyed it, it was the first time I truly enjoyed like a difficult wave part which made it stick out to me personally while it may not be the most amazing level of all time and i've talked to codex in the past and he does not understand why i like this a lot of the reason why i enjoy this is simply because i think it's a fun level i really thoroughly enjoyed my time with it and just overall the level is just a blast to play it's not my favorite insane demon but it's one of them and i think everyone should check out codex codex and stuff and red especially i think it's a fantastic level so if you haven't checked out red by codex you 100 should it's really good i feel like a lot of people sleep on this level it's very very fast paced it's very very fun and it has probably like a top three best songs in any level in the game kind of situation for me i don't know why i just really like the song that's all i have to say about it i think it's a great level that's my number 10 pick for my top 10 favorite demons of all time now coming in at number nine i think this is a level that a lot of people are going to be surprised to see because i don't think i've ever mentioned this level ever and i have long private of my video of it because it was back in the day when i just did replay uploads from every play from my ipad back when back in the day when i was a wee little lad uh but the next level is way of the darkness by neptune oh that popped up on screen i'm using incendium's video anyway this level has a really intriguing history for me personally because i first saw this level as like this impossible thing that no one could ever beat this is one of those old Neptune levels that no one really thought was possible. And when Darnok beat this originally, uh, back in 2014, I looked at it and was like, wow, people can actually beat this kind of stuff. And what then pursued was me trying to actually beat it. And I found myself able to actually complete it. And I felt like the biggest badass of all time. And that kind of like follows suit. A lot of the levels that you're going to be seeing on this list are levels that I just didn't think were possible, tried them, beat them. And this was like the first one of those. I saw Darnok beat it. I thought, that's insane. That's incredible. I want to try this. And then following suit, I was the first victor of a lot of different Neptune levels. But this one really stuck out with me personally as the old, wow, that is something that looks impossible. And it's just stuck out with me for that reason. It's a level that I look back at. I really like it. I think even today it holds up pretty well, even despite the fact that it's 10 million years old. And the level itself doesn't exactly look the greatest because I think it's like 1.7. 1. No, it, it's like 1.7. Yeah, 1.6, 1.7. But either way, I th I've always liked Way of the Darkness a lot. I think it's a fantastic level. And I personally think that Way of the Darkness is really good. It's a level that stuck out with me. I remember beating it for the map packs and I really enjoyed it. And to this day, I think it's a fantastic level. It stuck out with me. It made me realize that playing in this game was more than just beating easier levels. You could actually push your own limit. We Have the Darkness was the first one that really tried. To, I tried to push myself with because I thought it was impossible. And back then, it wasn't really normal to try and push yourself in the same way that we do today, where it's like, oh, this lo doesn't look possible. Let's try and beat it. Back then, it was like, yeah, we could just attempt, I suppose. 
And I attempted it, and I did it. It felt awesome. Coming in at number 8 is a, another very unique pick. I don't think anyone would have ever guessed this. But to put it into perspective what place in my story this has, this is a level that I originally beat back when it came out. It was considered like a really, really impressive achievement. I was one of the f original people who beat the level when it came out. It's a, an old Majako level. Kind of inspired me in a way because after that, I started using a lot of, like I started using blocks, spikes and stuff to make like art stuff in my levels. And the reason why the level stuck out to me was because that became a, kind of like a trademark of mine where I just used the blocks to create weird, wacky structures. I even made a dedicated level to just different clubstep monsters <laughs> back before clubstep monsters were a thing. This is Hello Demon. Really odd choice, if I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, I just like this level a ton. As I said, it has a lot of story with me because it was a level that I originally wanted to or i originally beat and then i was like hey that's a lot of really cool stuff i really like this i think this looks sick and then i used that as inspiration to do stuff and this was back when majaka was like the greatest art creator ever conceived in drop dash and i really liked it also sorry for the blinding quality i know it's beautiful blame zobras for the 480p here but this level just stuck out to me these monsters right here that you're seeing on screen now they just always truly stuck out to me as like, wow, you can actually make art in Geometry Dash. And that's exactly what I tried to do as a creator back in the day when I used to create. I just looked up to this level as a, wow, there are no limits to this game. And I still think that. I still think that this was truly the breakthrough level that just created, almost created the art genre of GD. And Hello Demon to me was just a masterpiece at the time, and it still is. There's a reason why it's still in my top favorite demons of all time. It's a fantastic level. I really, really like it. Again, this is just, just another one of those levels that, even though I think personally it's fantastic, the gameplay is just nothing spectacular, and the art is just whatever. But the reason why I like it as much is just because it's a part of what made me into who I am and what made me like the things that I like in GD. And Hello Demon to me is just that one Majako level that really stuck out. Some people think it's Future Demonus, some people like Stereo Demonus, so on and so forth. Everyone has their own favorite Majako level. Some think Treasure Mine, which is another level that I really, really enjoyed. But Hello Demon always stuck out to me as like the best one. And that's why I like it as much. I think it's just cool. And I really enjoy the art in it. I think it's sick for when it's made. Coming in at number seven, this is a level that got me back into Geometry Dash. The reason why this level is as high as it is, is because, as you guys know, I've had hiatus from this game multiple times, from 2015 roughly to 2017, and then from 2018 to 2020, I've had hiatus with this game where I just haven't played. I remember that when I originally beat this in 2017, the reason why I ended up playing this level and falling back into Geometry Dash was because of this level. I remember very vividly in class, I think it was English class, I was on my laptop, I was just chilling, having a good time, uh, not given a single anything about what the teacher was saying. I just booted up Geometry Dash because I was painfully bored, I haven't played the game in ages, and I sat down and played, and I saw this level, and I was like, that's a cool level, I want to try and beat that. And the level kind of just stuck with me. I ended up beating it in class over the next couple days after not having played for multiple years. I just started playing on my laptop, and I thought, that's really cool, I really like this level. So Blast Furnace by Samifying. It might have single-handedly gotten me back into GD because I thoroughly, really liked this level when I played it. It was a massive challenge back when I played it because I played it on 60 hertz. I hadn't played in two years, so it took me a little bit of time to learn. But I really, really like this level. And even today, I think this level holds up fantastically in the same sense as like something like uh, Heinz, where it's just a timeless classic, where no matter what update we're going into, this level will always look good. It executes colors perfectly. It executes the gameplay. It's really fun. It's really dynamic. A lot of the movements in this level are gorgeous and i hold this level very accountable for the fact that i got into geometry dash again which is the reason why i'm here today i think the level is great i just have nothing else to say it's one of very few boss fights that i thoroughly enjoy in gd i'm very often known as a very critical when it comes to boss fights i very rarely enjoy boss fights in this game because i think that to execute a good boss fight is very very difficult but i think this one does it very very well while it has some minor flaws with it itself again this is just another level that holds a very special place in my heart and the reason why as i previously mentioned got back into the game 
So while I can recognize its flaws, I still think the level itself is absolutely stellar. It's super fun to play. It got an awesome song. I really like Acid Notation. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but I think Acid Notation is one of the more fun musicians from Newgrounds that we've used in GD a lot. And it's just enjoyable. This level is cool. What else is there to say? This is just always a level that I'll recommend anyone to do. If you want XL level practice, this level is long as hell. If you want practice for longer levels, this level is fantastic. This boss fight is awesome. The dragon design here is sick. While it's a little bit static, I do still think it looks awesome. The detail in the dragon itself is phenomenal for a 2.0 level. And just everything about it is just so cool. It's such a cool level. There's nothing else to it. It's just Blast Furnace is amazing. And I really, really, I'm very happy that I ended up playing it back when I wasn't really back into GD very much. Uh, I beat this like a couple weeks before I did Cataclysm. Uh, it was like the one level that I beat. Then I decided, hey, I'm going to get a computer. I'm going to get back into GD. Uh, I got that beat Cataclysm, beat Bloodbath, all that stuff. And yeah, the rest is history. Here I am today. Yeah, Blast Furnace, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love this level. Okay, so coming out at number six, I'm going to get so much shit for this. <laughs> because it's not even a level. <laughs> uh, you guys can hate me for whatever, however much you want for this one. But coming in at number six is what I truly believe to be the single most satisfying level in this entire game. I'll, I'll just let it play out for itself. <laughs> you can just appreciate it for what it is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I played and beat Invisible Deadlock back in 2020. And it took me a long time. It took me like a week or so to play and beat this level. And you might be wondering, but Aeon is just deadlocked. You can't see. And you're absolutely right. That is exactly what it is. The reason why I like this is because I've never felt more awesome playing a level in my entire life. Invisible Deadlock, as much of a joke as it is, is my favorite insane name. And I get asked about that a lot. And every time I answer Invisible Deadlock, people think I'm joking. But I'm really not. I think this is genuinely one of the single most satisfying levels you could ever pull off in this game. And as much of a joke level as it is it truly is an incredible feeling pulling this level off because it requires so much just raw skill memory and just everything deadlock as a whole is very enjoyable and very fun i i do genuinely believe that it is gameplay wise the best of the main levels and playing it invisible i've never felt more awesome in my entire life and invisible deadlock will always st stick out as like when I felt like I started to become like really good at this game. That's just kind of how it is now. I like this level a lot. You guys can hate it with however much you want. I understand why people don't like it. It's just my personal experience with it was fantastic and I really enjoyed it. And to this day, it's probably in my top three most satisfying completions of all time. Invisible Deadlock is great. As much as people hate it, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And I will take shit for it any day calling it one of my favorite levels of all time. All right, so next up is a very weird choice. I've been searching on YouTube. I legitimately cannot find more than one video on this level. That's how obscure this level is. But the reason why I like this level is because this level inspired me in a really unique way. Uh, this is the reason why I decided to make To The Stars, which is, in my opinion, my best level to date, along with To The Stars 2. And it has just it's kind of like faded away from gd as a whole but to me this will always hold a very special place in my heart because i played this and i was just wowed by how incredible this level felt and the level in question is glittering by lunar sim this is a 1.7 level i believe i'm pretty sure it's 1.7 at least and it just uses color in like a very unique and cool way and it was the first time i had really seen the the glow the glowy neon style that we all know and love today from like one point eight nine and you might be thinking this doesn't even look that spectacular but the thing about it to me is that i just thought it was really cool i hadn't really seen neon style be used before and i thought it was really really interesting and i thought the way that it used the black and the outlines of the blocks to create this like eerie cool atmosphere was very very cool very very sick and i just thought it was sick i just liked it i thought it was intriguing but there's one part in particular that I really liked, and it's this part. As you can see here with the whole, like, flashy stuff here, those structures were super cool. And I always, I looked at them for the first time, I was like, wow, that's insane. That's awesome. Very similar to Hello Demon. It was just one of those levels that just wowed me in the form of the way that it structured stuff. And I just, I just always looked at it and was like, 
that's incredible. And you're, you see it very clearly in the beginning of To The Stars, where I use that kind of structuring in my structures, naturally. And it's just, I just always like this level. It inspired me to create what is now my favorite level that I've made, and it's just a sick level overall. So while glittering is like far from the greatest level of all time, uh, man, is it cool. It's another level that is just an obscure level that I really like because it just inspired me in a way. And it's just because of that has stuck out to me. It, it, I, I recognize the fact that it's not the greatest level of all time, but because of my personal attachment to the level and the way that the level attached to me and what I've done with this game, it's just, I can't help but not love it. It's amazing. It's really, really good. Okay, so <laughs> coming up is uh, the single least expected thing of all time. The next few, the, the three of the last four are very, very expected to a lot of people. I don't think anyone has been, uh, is going to be surprised about these ones. But next up is none other than the most anticipated level on the list, probably. Maybe the, like second or third most anticipated, but it's anticipated nonetheless. Rust by Nage Few. I, I get a lot of people who just assume that I hated this level because of how long I spent on it. It's the single longest I've ever spent on a level. The longest I've spent before this was playing like an hour or two a day of Yadagorasu for like a month just to beat it for Christmas of 2020. Uh, Rust I played for like six hours a day for a month and a half straight. And people just assume that because of that and because of the fact that I got really unlucky having 52 total deaths after the last cube, I would hate the level, but that's not the case. The reason why I was able to stuck, stick out nearly 70,000 attempts on this level and 160 hours of playtime was because I loved it. I really thoroughly enjoyed playing this level all the way through. So while, yeah, I got annoyed with it, that was mostly because I just, I just got unlucky. Didn't, does that mean I disliked it? No. I love this level. I genuinely, thoroughly love this level with all my heart, and I, I, I'm very happy to have it done. The reason why I don't want to do another hardest anytime soon, even though I feel ready for it, is because I want to salvage the fact that this is my hardest for a while longer. Rust is awesome. It's a near-perfect level in every way, shape, and form. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic, and I have nothing else to say about it. Rust is just one of those levels that I look at, and I keep going back to just looking at how I did that, and I'm thinking, well, how the hell did I beat this? But yeah, Rust, absolutely fantastic. Love this level to death. Spectacular. Spectacular level. So as you can see, uh, now the levels are getting a little bit more predictable. Uh, Rust, I don't think anyone wasn't surprised about. Uh, but the next one is maybe a little bit more surprising to a lot of people. Number three on my list of my top 10 favorite demons of all time is a level that I have a lot of story with. When I say a lot of story, I mean a lot of story. So uh, strap yourselves in because you guys are going to go down a lane. That's for sure. Uh, memory lane for some of you, maybe. I don't know. But we're going to be telling a little bit of a story. So number three is Deadly Club Step. And you might be wondering, Aeon, why Deadly Club Step? This level is just mediocre. I have such a long and extensive story with this level. So Deadly Club Step, to me, is a milestone demon. Basically, way back when, when Riot was the first person to beat this level, I had been raising him six, seven months prior. And... I really wanted to beat this level. It was back then considered an impossible level, and Riot and I were in the race to beat this. I've never been more close to beating a level and then giving up than this. I did a two-attempt practice run on this six months before Riot initially beat the level, calling it impossible at the time, after 15,000 attempts, and the one death that I had on it was the first triple spike. And then I gave up. Why I gave up, I have no idea. I could have been the first person to beat this level, and I just didn't. I could have been the ride over that time why i didn't finish it i have no idea now it's a medium demon uh i don't really care this level is awesome to me it, I, I have so such a long story with this i remember getting i think i got a 92 or something on mobile back in the day which was insane at the time by the way riot also tried beating this on mobile just couldn't like i died to one of the very last ship click or nice. ball clicks nice, 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 nice. And yeah, no, Deadly Club Step to me is just a really long story for me. And when I say a long story, I mean like, I almost beat this level three years before I beat it, back in 2014. Like around when the level came out, a few months after the level came out, I was grinding this nonstop super hard and I really, really, really tried to be the first person ever to beat it. Failed it, came back three years later, beat it, and to this day, I feel like it's my biggest bag fumble of all time. Uh, 
But it doesn't really matter. I still really like this level. I have a lot of good memories sitting in Skype calls with Riot, trying to beat this level, playing it like on our phones, talking about our progress. And it was just a really good time. I just, I don't know. It was just simpler times, you know? And Deadly Club Sip to me is just one of those levels that really felt special to beat, even though it wasn't a huge accomplishment when I ended up beating it. It still felt like a personal accomplishment because of how long I spent on it in a sense. I have, like, if I go on to Geometry Dash, I probably have, like, 17,000 attempts on this level, or something crazy like that. So, yeah, no, Deadly Cluster to me was just a huge deal, and I'm very, very happy that I ended up beating it inevitably, even though I should have beaten it, like, three years earlier, but that's whatever. I still really like it. I think, I think it's a great level. Two Neptune levels in my top 10? Yeah. Suck it. Number two is, uh, a lot of people expect this to be number one, but it's not number one. Uh, number two goes to a level that I found incredibly fun, and I like to take a little bit of credit for this because everyone seemed to hate it before me, I, I can't speak. Everyone seemed to hate it before I did it, then I called it amazing, and then a massive influx of people tried to beat it. Like, I, we were talking like 35, 40 people beat it when I did it. After I beat it, within the next four months, like a hundred new people beat it. And it has quickly become one of the single most beloved levels on the Demons list for anyone who's tried it since. And I really like this level. It's still my number two favorite demon of all time. It is obviously, I don't know, I don't even think I need to really introduce it, honestly. Killbot by Lithifusion, verified by Bolt Step. This level, oh, it's amazing. It's one of the, uh, in the same vein as Invisible Deadlock, is just an incredibly satisfying level to play. It's very, very fun. You just feel really cool when playing it because of the fact that you just, if you don't know what you're doing, it's impossible to see what you're supposed to do, which just makes you feel so awesome playing it. And the theming, everything is just awesome. This level is fantastic. And for anyone who's been watching this far, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a hint. I am doing Requiem very soon. So for those of you who are interested in that, stay tuned for that. Requiem is gonna be sick. But Killbot is just awesome. And it was such an enjoyable experience from start to finish. Learning this level was really cool, really fun, and it's, I like learning. I like the learning process of levels. I, I know a lot of people don't, but I think it's fun to learn. I think it's fun to figure out how to do levels. So beating this just felt like a journey. It felt like an accomplishment. A lot of levels that I beat these days, I don't feel that accomplished with, just because they don't really take too long. They're just another level to add to my repertoire of levels that I've beaten. But Killbot felt like an accomplishment. Very, very satisfied to have beaten Killbot, and it's just a really cool level, and I think basically everyone can agree that it's just a sick level overall. Were you surprised to see Killbot at number two? Well, for anyone who's watched me for a while now should probably know what number one is. God, number one is so awesome. <laughs> number one, ah, uh, my number one favorite demon of all time. I don't think anyone is going to be surprised if you have watched my content for the past few months. My number one favorite demon of all time is, of course, Nelv by Sir Geister, Dianid, and Nautilsa. Where do I even begin with this level? This level is the definition of an experience. It is the single most intimidating level I've ever tried. It has so many elements to it that just makes you feel like this is not possible. This wave part, the ending, everything about this. The reason why this level is so fantastic from like a playing perspective is the fact that while nothing is particularly impossible, it's just the whole figuring it out part. I don't consider this a memory level, unlike some other people, but this level is all about figuring it out and becoming consistent. When you start playing this level, you feel like there is nothing that's gonna make it consistent with this level. And then you start figuring it out, and you start becoming consistent, and it just becomes the single most incredible thing to ever play, and it's just amazing. It is such a cool level, and what, or seeing someone play it and seeing someone figure it out and actually start getting the hang of it is such an experience in itself, and I will probably never have the same feeling of insanity as I had playing this level. Playing this level made me feel something that I cannot replicate with any other level, and it is the only level that I have ever given a 100 out of 100 enjoyment. This level is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And the atmosphere that it builds up and the tension that it creates in this part as you approach the mountain, you've just gone out of the most intense part in the entire level up until this point. And then you just go through this like nerve-wracking part that is kind of easy but kind of intense, and you're like starting to build nerves. 
and you approach this mountain. God, this mountain is the single most brutal thing I've ever experienced in a level because it's such a long part, it's such a long stretch, and it just builds this incredible, incredible tension with between you and the level. And then you approach this part where it's just, you don't have to click anything for like the next couple seconds. And it throws you into the most brutal duel I think I've ever beaten in any level. It, it, there's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it. This level is a masterpiece. I think it's going to take a really long time before this ever gets dethroned as my favorite demon. If Just favorite level. This level is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I Oh, it's so good. Nelv is just what an experience. I really wish I could re-experience Nelv. But Nelv is just amazing. I love Nelv. It's so good. And I really hope you guys as well just appreciate Nelv for what it is. I know not everyone likes the decoration. I think Nelv is just beautiful though. And yeah, that's my top 10 favorite demons of all time. I was going to do a top 10 levels of all time, but then I realized there would be like one non-demon. I would just throw it at the end there. Uh, my second favorite level of all time is Angel Beats by X7. I uh, just thought I'd let you guys know that. Uh, but yeah, no, those are my 10 favorite demons of all time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And hopefully you appreciated some little story times here because a lot of this is just relating to, hey, that's stuff that I did way back when. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So yeah, I'll see you guys around. Eat your green, stay healthy, stay hydrated. Thank you for making my day better. Hope made yours a little bit better too. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.